The Chinese renminbi experienced a wild plunge against the U.S. dollar on June thirtieth, twenty twenty-three, with the onshore RMB falling below the significant level of seven point two seven, and the offshore RMB breaking through the resistance level of seven point two eight, setting a new historical record. Meanwhile, Russia has dumped as much as four point five billion U.S. dollar worth of RMB within the year. Resulting in a shrinkage of a whole third of its RMB reserves. In attempt to curb the sharp depreciation of the renminbi, China's central bank set a higher than expected mid rate, aiming to hold its ground amidst the tumultuous foreign exchange market. However, the impact of the storm far exceeded expectations, causing even the leadership of Chinese central bank to be shaken. On July one, an extraordinary meeting of the top leaders of the People's Bank of China commenced. The removal of Guo Shuqing, the head of the bank, and the revocation of the position of Vice Secretary Yi Gang, while retaining the position of the governor temporarily, indicates the dissatisfaction of Chinese economic policymakers with the current slide in the exchange rate. It also suggests the possibility of leveraging Huang Gongshen, the current director of the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, and his expertise in adjusting future policies. Nevertheless, this personnel shakeup reveals deeper implications. The current depreciation of the yuan is far from what the Little Pink reporters claim, suggesting that China is deliberately and controllably lowering the exchange rate to secure more export orders. Instead, the market has maintained a bearish outlook on the yuan. Experts point out that the key issue lies in the significant amount of yuan in the Chinese authorities have injected into the offshore market through currency swap agreements, only to suffer severe losses in the face of interest rate differentials with the U.S. dollar. With the market predominantly favoring the purchase of U.S. dollars, the decline in the yuan's exchange rate has become an uncontrollable situation. In the strategic alliance between China and Russia, at first glance, the trade relationship appears fair and just. China purchases oil from Russia in yuan, while Russia exchanges these yuan for U.S. dollars in the global market. However, when the total amount of yuan sold by the Russian central bank and private enterprises suddenly surge to 4.5 billion, this alliance fails to enhance the international status of the yuan as expected. On the contrary, it has accelerated the depreciation of the yuan, dealing a significant blow to the economic strategy of the Chinese Communist Party. Nevertheless, these are just the tip of the iceberg. The latest reports indicate. That Russia continues to sell off yuan to finance its war in Ukraine, implying that the Chinese Communist Party bears an undeniable responsibility for Russia's continued aggression. Placing oneself in such a strategic dilemma undoubtedly reflects the foolishness of any country's leadership. All these developments point to an inevitable outcome: China may need to make significant adjustments to its economic policies. The intricacies of Russia's sale of the Chinese yuan are worth examining. Due to U.S. sanctions, U.S. entities are prohibited from engaging in transactions with the Central Bank of Russia, and transactions involving the Russian Ministry of Finance and the National Wealth Funds are also prohibited. As a result, in January 2023, the Russian central bank sold 4.4 billion yuan from the National Wealth Fund, buying U.S. dollars. Euros and pounds sterling to stabilize the rubble exchange rate. This event leads us to speculate that the Russian central bank may have sold yuan through multiple traders in the foreign exchange market, buying Western currencies in return. But why did Russia decide to sell off the yuan? This is related to economic sanctions imposed by the West on Russia. Due to these measures, the Russian ruble cannot directly exchange with the U.S. dollar and needs to use the yuan as an intermediary. Why was there a need to stabilize the ruble exchange rate? Since February of this year, Western sanctions have capped the price of Russian oil at a maximum of sixty dollars per barrel. If this price ceiling persists throughout the year, Russia's oil revenues will decrease by twenty-five percent to thirty percent. 
To make matters worse, a recent article from Finland's national think tank suggests setting price caps not only on Russian oil products such as diesel and refined oil, but also on crude oil. On the other hand, U.S. President Biden stated in an interview that if the current oil price of $60 per barrel fails to stop Russia's war, they will further reduce the price to $30 per barrel. And if Russia refuses to sell, it will lose its cash flow. If this trend continues, Russia's fiscal revenue will continuously decrease, causing the ruble to lose its value. If the ruble exchange rate is not stabilized, the money earned from selling oil will be wiped out due to the ruble's sharp decline. This is the background behind the Russian central bank's sale of 4.5 billion yuan in January to stabilize the ruble's exchange rate. From a war perspective, Russia has enormous financial needs. In the Donetsk and Luhansk region of eastern Ukraine, during the most intense 48 hours of the conflict, the consumption of the Russian military was enough to deplete all of the ammunition inventory of the entire British active duty forces. This massive financial demand forces Russia to procure a large amount of supplies. However, due to international financial sanctions restricting the global transfer of the Russian rubble, Russian companies and individuals have opened accounts in Chinese banks over the past year. They sell yuan for US dollars and euros through Chinese banks branches in the United States, European Union, Switzerland and the United Kingdom. Despite facing sanctions, Russia has managed to obtain foreign currencies to sustain its military and economic operations. However, this approach has harmed the exchange rate of the yuan. Nevertheless, the viability of this strategy is short-lived. At the request of the US, the Bank of China restricted this operation on Russian accounts, preventing Russia from exchanging yuan for US dollars through this method. This undoubtedly benefit the stability of the yuan's exchange rate, but it is not a proactive move by China itself. Rather, it is a result of US advice. This reveals China's short-sightedness and folly in handling this issue while exposing its support for Russia's war. Despite this, Russia has found new ways to obtain foreign currency, such as underground transfers in places like Armenia and Georgia. Another method is to utilize a currency swap agreement signed with China, opening accounts in these countries and conducting currency transactions. This strategy clearly exploits the loopholes in China's promotion of the internationalization of the yuan. Countries that have signed bilateral currency swap agreements with China include the five Central Asian countries, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives, ASEAN, Egypt, Cyprus, Switzerland, Mongolia, Argentina, New Zealand, South Korea, Iceland, Russia, and Hong Kong, China. In these locations, local currencies can be exchanged for the Chinese yuan, deposited in banks, and then traded for US dollars. China's policy has allowed a significant amount of offshore yuan to continue funding Russia's military actions. This not only demonstrates China's indirect support for Russia's war in Ukraine, but also adds pressure to the devaluation of the yuan. This phenomenon raises questions about the decision-making wisdom of China's leadership. So how much more yuan does Russia have to sell? According to 2022 data, Russia had a trade surplus of 251.4 billion yuan with China. And this surplus increased by an additional 53.7 billion yuan in the first five months of 2023. Based on this, Russia may hold over 300 billion yuan. According to SWIFT data, Russia was the third largest market after Hong Kong and UK for offshore yuan transactions in August of last year, accounting for 4.27% of total yuan payments. So far, Russia has sold 30 billion yuan out of the 300 billion yuan, equivalent to 10%. Clearly, there is still a greater potential for further sell-offs. Let us delve further into China's global circulation policy for the yuan. Since signing the first bilateral currency swap agreement with South Korea in December 2008, the People's Bank of China has vigorously promoted the internationalization of the yuan. To date, China has conducted 56 currency swaps with dozens of countries worldwide, 
releasing a total of 6.92 trillion yuan. However, this massive circulation of yuan brings significant challenges, especially in maintaining exchange rate stability. To stabilize the offshore exchange rate of 7 trillion yuan, at least an equivalent amount of US dollars is needed. This is a major reason why China has accumulated a large foreign exchange reserve. However, considering that the central banks and enterprises of Russia and other countries may continue to sell off yuan, we must ask, can China existing foreign exchange reserve withstand this pressure? On the surface, China has over 3 trillion in foreign exchange reserves. However, when we consider the external debts that needs to be repaid in the next 12 months, the actual usable foreign exchange reserve amount to only 730 billion. Moreover, most of its non-dollar Western currencies making it less liquid. Therefore, when the devaluation of 7 trillion yuan occurs in the offshore market and a large amount of yuan is converted into US dollars, there is serious doubt whether China's foreign exchange reserve can withstand this pressure. The current situation is that even if US bonds stop raising interest rates and the domestic economy gradually recovers, a significant amount of yuan will flow overseas due to the signing of internationalization agreements. Considering the interest rate differential between the US dollars and the yuan, central banks and enterprises of various countries may choose to sell yuan and buy US dollars to earn higher interest income. Although many recently signed internationalization agreements for the yuan have not yet taken effect, their implementation could exert pressure on the yuan's exchange rate. However, if these agreements were terminated, China might lose some partner countries. These countries were originally able to earn interest by exchanging yuan. Therefore, China may have to continue promoting the internationalization of the yuan to maintain international relations, even though we may further depress the yuan's exchange rate. The preference for the US dollar among the Chinese population, both domestically and internationally, is a growing concern. Due to the high interest rate offered on US dollar deposits, many individuals choose to convert their savings from yuan to dollars. This inclination towards the US dollars over the yuan reflects a deep-seated issue in the Chinese economy. Despite being the world's second largest economy, China still heavily relies on the US dollar. From a deeper perspective, the current depreciation of the yuan can be seen as a return to its true value. Going back to 1994, when China implemented a unified exchange rate system for the yuan, the exchange rate was set at 8.70 yuan per US dollar, reflecting the economic conditions of China at that time. Today, China's core economic structure has not undergone significant changes and is still primarily driven by real estate and exports. This seems to contrast with the strong development we witness in the Chinese economy. Aren't there skyscrapers and infrastructure projects everywhere? However, this is actually the result of massive debt, with China's debt reaching over 300 trillion yuan. This amount is equivalent to utilizing the wealth of the next 200 years in the past 30 years, creating an illusion of exceptional prosperity in China within a short period. However, to repay these debts, China must use these trillions to build a global supply chain, which requires China to have sufficient openness and embrace all global resources, especially Western ideas. But the Chinese Communist Party may not be willing to make such a decision. Currently, even the interest of these debts have become difficult to bear, requiring the yuan to return to its actual value. Therefore, if there are no major upheavals within the CCP in the next 10 years, a depreciation of the yuan to 8.70 is entirely possible. Commentators from Taiwan have pointed out that China's manufacturing industry is being replaced by Southeast Asian countries and the resurging US manufacturing industry. Currently, China has not found a new economic development model and lacks long-term economic policies for 10 to 20 years. The current situation in China is one of transition and confusion, with a lack of consistency in economic policies. 
Furthermore, domestic authoritarianism has led to a series of crises, from the sharp deterioration in the U.S.-China relations to diplomatic missteps with Russia and the threat of war against Taiwan. These crises reflect internal pressures. Some Chinese geopolitical scholars have even put forward extreme views, advocating the willingness to sacrifice 200 cities and 140 million people in order to feed Taiwan and the United States. The emergence of such radical stands at this moment reflects the economic instability and social chaos in China. With these domestic dynamics and the concentration of power, new problems are brewing. Consequently, the anxiety in the United States is intensifying. The U.S. is attempting to establish a continuous channel of communication with the CCP to prevent unpredictable problems arising from China's economic downturn. At the military level, the U.S. maintains a high level of vigilance. Although China currently lacks the capability to challenge Taiwan and the United States as the world's second largest economy, China's internal turmoil undoubtedly has negative global implications. The lack of long-term stable economic strategy may be the biggest challenge China currently faces. China may need to make significant adjustments to its economic policies.